Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And each one uh, refers to the, the beauty, so it's, uh, I mean, different. One uh, by head, one by one for beauty. Because um, each one is different. Uh, and, and it says, that's why it says a hundred. So it should have just said, Meya Vesel and the Sheva Shonim. Didn't have to say, Meya Shonim, Vesel and Shonim, Sheva Shonim. That Tashi Gerade, I don't know how, uh, I'm going to put Rashi I can't uh, say we don't know what Rahu White is, but in Baratius, you have the similar thing. Uh, you want to tell me how, how many years was the Shushalach? Okay, I got, uh, wasn't that, I didn't get to me. Shushalach, I found Sheish. Like, by you, Sheish, uh, he counted one year, 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 one but uh, the price he does make a deal from that. That is why he makes this deal. The, 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 the Medrash says that there's, uh, there was a difference in a different one, like Gabi Anshim and Gabi Beauty. And the beauty is Zion. Now that's, you know, somehow, I don't know in our day and age, you can say the most beautiful girls are going to be seven years old, uh, then unless you can talk to a pedophile. That's, that's not going to be the case. Uh, so what is so what does it mean for beauties? I think it means for beauty for complexion. I always say like uh, soft as as a child's whatever you call it, anatomy part of the anatomy that's used. And uh, what it is trying to say is that the the younger the person is, the more beautiful the skin is, the more translucent it is, the more the more smooth it is, whatever it is. And what we now have to use creams and these things to make it that that way. So it was naturally by her. So even though she was a hundred years old, it was still uh, it was still uh, what do you call it? And even though she's 127 years old, it was still like that. So then, first of all, this that we say that you remember last week that she became a, a need again and so on doesn't mean she was old. Uh, until Avram asked for oldness, for aging, they all looked like 20 years old. So uh, then, so even though she's 127 years old, she looked like she's 20. Uh, the Avram, the, the, the aging of them affect the whole generation. Everybody got old when Yitzchak was born. Not when Yitzchak was born, when Yitzchak was older, when they started making the mistake, then they thought he was Avram. That he, that he asked for aging so that there can be some kind of uh, distinction between the two of them. Um, now, if that's the case, that the aging didn't exist until Avram, who said that it affected the other people of the door? Maybe it did, but that, that, that may be just born people, but not the, not people that were, were there before. So I don't know what to tell you. So. But uh, with some things to think about. Uh, and it says so. And this, this is after that I heard Bishas the time when I was sitting shiva for my sister, where Avram Kamenetsky uh, was Menachem Avul, and he, he, he told me a story from Obiankif. And uh, this is what the Loshim it says over here. It says, "Vayu chay yisora mei yoshanu v'esmoshanu v'shavashanu shnei chay yisora." So it says first, "Vayu chay yisora." So you don't need Shnei Chayi Sola. We already said that these are the years of, of Sola. So what did he say the second Shnei Chayi Sola? So he said that there are people in times in life, this is for every regretting, every person who's sitting in Shiva, it's a, it's a type of Nechome, that people always double-guess themselves if the tragedy happens. 
we should have gone to this doctor, we should have done this, we, should have, we shouldn't have gone to him, whatever it is, back and forth, right? And, and you always feel guilty about it, that maybe we should have done something that we didn't do. So he says, from this posik, you see there's no such thing. That was how she lived. Now you have the guilt feelings, right? And all these things, he's telling me, these are the years of Sova. No matter what you would have done, no matter what you would have thought, these were the years of Sova. He's not going to live longer, not going to live what he thought. Now tell me I don't have to do anything. Because they said, no, because you don't know what the, what the thing is. And maybe she's supposed to live long and supposed to have this aggravation of getting sick and so on. So you either have to try ishtadlis. But past the ishtadlis that you do, the fact that she died, she died because shnei chayeso. That's the year. If you take a look by Avram, at the end of the setter, it does not say such a, a, such a lotion. It says one time, uh, the lotion of shnois. Uh, we do the pasik, we take that. Now, oh, where is it? I saw one more page. It turns so easy. I can make that easy. There it is. Ve'eli v'meimei shnei chayi avoam shechai ma'ashonu shvishonu chamishonu. That's it. Ma'yig v'ayomas. Doesn't say anything. Ve'eli v'meimei shnei chayi avoam. So obviously he doesn't use that repetitive lotion. So it's a shtikorai, it, 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 it says that the fact that it's repetitive lush, it means to tell you, hey, look, hey, these are the years of sorrow. There's no, it could not have been longer. That's it. There's nothing wrong, even though there's a medush, there's a besotten god, and she got to think. Well, all, all of these things are the way she died, but it, but longer she wouldn't have lived. I thought it died earlier. What? I remember he died earlier, five years earlier. Than yeah, that's said. a different story, but it's what it should have said. Uh, Avram, I mean, you mean doesn't say the seven was this is not the years of Avram. I mean, he fought what he lived, but by any of them, by Shmuel doesn't say it. Man. But that's a good point, maybe. What you said. By Sarah it says, I did not have By Sarah it says, I did not have that he's not a. so. And that's why Avram was clever, Sarah. Really, because she, she had kind of lived longer have, because longer. she was ten years shorter. But how many years do you take away from a person for that? Yeah. Okay. And that, that this whole shayla is what did she even mean by that? There's so many different pshatim in uh, what do you call it? Uh, whatever she told them, hamos chalach or whatever. Now, she died in Kirasalba, which is in Hebron. Okay, that's where they lived for 12 years. And that's it. then it says, Avram the Sora, He came to where he come from, Zogdrashi, came from Be'er Sheva. So I don't remember if I said last, last, last time about burnout. I said it. Then this thing would be in the last piece, do I? Okay, if you guys don't remember, it's so probably. They say about Levaya. About Levaya, but not, not here. Okay. So the the end of the settler was that um, Avram, when he went back after the Arcade, he went back to Be'er Sheva. And it says a very first, funny Posik. By Yoshev Avram Abor, by Yukum, by Yuchayach Mavisheva. And he settled there. Right? She says, can't be that he settled there because he lived in, in Hebron, so it doesn't really mean he settled there. So what does it say he settled there? What does it mean? There's no meaning. So Shad is, I think, that first of all, he went to Be'er Sheva. Why did he want to go to Be'er Sheva? He lived in Hebron. Why is he going to Be'er Sheva? Because if you look at the page before, uh, they, they made a bris in Be'er Sheva so that he's going to open up a, an A-shell and he opens up the A-shell and he says he lived in Eretz Plishtim many years 
Now the leg, the, the, the Lashen Eretz Plishtim is the first time really we see these Lashen Shainis. Before, we have the Lashen of Melech Goror. Uh, and you went between Shur and what do you call it? In, uh, doesn't even say, uh, like, it says right where it is. But doesn't, but near Goror. You hear, Vayeshev Kodesh, Ben Kodesh, Ben Shur, by Yoga Bigor. You know, Avram Sov, uh, they, they don't even mention the word Plishtim. And uh, somehow Plishtim is a low-level low name when they talk about uh, the nation. So but what did Avram do after, <coughs> after they made the deal? What happened to Avimelech? They went back to it's Plishtim. Till then, they didn't even use the word Plishtim. He always came, he always came up in because that's for it, doesn't say where they come from, because you know about before we come, some of go. Okay. And then what happens here, they went, first time I splished them. And now it goes down. Uh, so I kind of, the reason it's called that I splished him is because he gave over the education of the name of of the of, of Be'er Sheva Tavram, so now he's retired from educating. He doesn't have to bother with it. I mean, till now he obviously wasn't doing a good job. He had very good ideals, but he wasn't able to give them over. And therefore, mainly it took Avram to be the, to be the one that's going to be the mechanech. Uh, okay, so where did they do? We're free. So where do we go? We went back to Eretz Plishti. We didn't go back to Gro. We went back to have a good time. He didn't live in Beersheva, he lived in Eretz Plishtim. Why Eretz Plishtim? 26 years. So really I learned that he, that he had burnout, that he intended to build up Beersheva to be like him. And he took a look and they weren't like him. And you take a look sometimes after years, years of work, 26 years of work, he takes a look around at the people that he created, his Talmidim, and they're not what he wanted. So he felt that Tzeretz pushed him. So he went away. Gave up, 26 years, enough to put him for one place, he went away, went back to Chavon. At least there he has Chavrusis, whatever it is, he went back to Chavon. Now he's a chavrin, and when she gives him the arcade, okay, he goes to the arcade and he sees what's the sign where the mokim is. There was a, 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 a column of, of smoke uh, that, that rose, blush and he saw it, and Yitzchak saw it, but the Leaza uh, Yishmael didn't see it. So they, that's why he knew that was the place, and that's only day two are the ones that can go, you know, the rest of them have to stay there. And what did he see? He saw a, a, a smoke rising from a desert. There's no, no living things it is. It's a desert, a threshing floor, whatever you want to call it. It was not, it was not a place where you grew things. It wasn't a farm. So he sees you can have Kedusha come up from a desert. If that's the case, a desert can produce that. So what is Be'er Sheva? I put in 26 years into Be'er Sheva. Let me go see what it was. And he goes back to Be'er Sheva and he sees it's Be'er Sheva. It's not Eretz Plishtim. It's not what he wanted. He didn't accomplish what he wanted. You gotta keep still working on it. But he did accomplish. What did he accomplish? He accomplished that they, they look like him. They dress like him. They have a good, okay, they're not for real. They're, they're, most of his imitation, most of his chitzonias maybe, but they're doing the mitzvahs and they're, and, and, and they're acting like for me hidden. So, hey, you accomplish something. And you want a better deal? Okay, we got a better, better deal. Work, 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 don't keep, keep working. The next day I'll take over. But whatever it is there, you've accomplished. So you don't feel, shouldn't feel bad. So that's where he says there by Yoga Yaakov Be'er Sheva. Yaakov would have stayed there, he stayed there, but whatever reason he went back, I guess he got to come back to move also. He has to come back uh, to Hebron. When he got back to Hebron, they tell him his wife died. 
all of a sudden he's there. But that, 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 the, the Rashi that he says, Labdafke, means he, at that point he didn't live there because he went back to Hebron. Didn't even have to say he living in Hebron at that time, I guess, but that's the, why is he going back to Hebron if he lived in Be'er Sheva? <coughs> that's probably what it means. Because it says that where did she die for is as if he didn't leave. He's still there. Okay. Now, obviously, Avram did not prepare a, a base for it. Why, I don't know. I guess, you know, this union of Zgula uh, to buy a base for it. You know, a, 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 a place, people buying it left and right, you know, it's a school, so you don't want to use it ever. Okay, that's fine. But somehow you don't see Avram doing that. He didn't buy anything. So now he needed it, so he has to buy one. And he's going out to speak to Bnei Ches. Um, what? I don't understand what it means. So you're going to Rashi. Um, what did he mean? Gevetoshov. Yanechim Ochem says, I'm a girl. I'm willing to leave myself as a girl. If not, I'll take it as a toshov, meaning it belongs to me. If you go back to the Akeda, I mean, not the Akeda, but when Absalom, where he was given the land, it says, they made a bris, Rebbeinu made a bris to Avram, that he's going to give it to his children because he didn't want the, uh, the, the Abba Meishonah to start when they went down, he wanted them to start when Yitzchak's birth. Because it's supposed to be the first segment will be Eretz Le'i Lohem. They're going to live in a foreign land. So if that's the case, Avram didn't take the land, and he doesn't want to take the land, so what kind of a threat is it? that I could take the land. Well, you, well, you could take the land, what do you know? You're not going to take it. And then besides, you gave it up. The bench, you offered it to you, and you say, you know, I'm not taking it. You wanted to give it to my children. So it's not yours. It could have been yours, but it's not yours. And therefore, we learn about Mashiach also, that with Lohem Ksiv, Lohem Loiksiv, Lohem Ksiv. That means God promised it to them, and they didn't get it yet. That's why they have to have three Samasim. He's amazing out there, so therefore he's not taking it. He can't take it. That's why I don't understand clearly what Rashi means here. But, but that's what Rashi says. Um, okay, they go for many things. He wants, and he says, "I want to talk to Ephraim." And the story is that he ran away to uh, what happened when he, when he was being giving him alochim food. So the Medrash says, uh, the Pekid Abelezer really, uh, maybe it's a Medrash too, but the Pekid Abelezer says it, that the ox, and Corny Tuss, it's one of the oxen, ran away, and ran to him and also Machpelah, and Avram chased after it, and he saw him also Machpelah, and he saw uh, other Machabas uh, sleeping there, and uh, whatever it is, and all of a sudden he wants to be buried there. Okay. A lot of questions on this thing. Uh, first of all, if he's been in the middle of Atmosis Archim and he's trying to make a meal for them and, one, and the ox runs away, I take a different ox and then I'll go find the ox. I don't chase after the ox before I gave him the food because otherwise I'm spending a lot more time preparing the food. So I ran away. I also, uh, what do you call it? I, I, I probably I caught the ox then. How, many, how much time do you spend in the Miyara looking around the place to find till you saw the Machab? Well, you saw him right away, so you left right away. I saw him and got out of here right away. So also Mashmi didn't do that. So exactly what it means, I don't know. Um, I'm from, um, yeah. But, Zuntai. Now, he doesn't tell this, the reason that he wants us to make Pelib is because Chavim of Rome and, and Odomad buried it, right? And what, what's he going to write there? And he says, and he doesn't mention it all to, uh, 
to um, any, um, if he doesn't tell it to Ephraim at all, that I'm there, that, 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 you know, you have a beautiful property, you have India, you have, the, you have other Mechava buried, I'd like to buy it from you. Right? What would the price be at that, at that at that moment if he would have told him that? Right? So he doesn't tell it to him. Is that being honest? Okay. Again, to Allah now. I have a machine. I don't know. Don't ask me what kind of machine. But I'm able to see what what products. What I guess or. There exists in a certain in a, in, a, in a certain property, and I uh, I took a look at the uh, this the, the thing, and it shows me that there is a a, mine, a gold mine right underneath the guy's property. But he doesn't know about it. And when he bought it, the guy before didn't know about it, right? So do I have to tell him? When I offer him the, the price for the, for the land, do I have to tell him, uh, you know, uh, by the way, you have a gold mine there, and how much do I owe you for the gold mine? Or, I don't have to tell you. My from Bafina didn't tell. I don't have to tell you. It's not yours. It wasn't the guy before of yours either. Otherwise, you have to tell the guy before now. Not the guy, this guy who went to got him got down to find out, find out who's the first guy that got it after the flood. That's the guy you got to pay. Okay, but after that, uh, the thing is, if a person doesn't know that his property was kind of something, it's not kind of. You have to know what your property possesses until you coin it. And we see this from... Uh, by Negan nearly by Boyes, by by Tzoras of the Bayes, that you break the house down and uh, you find a cachet of uh, of money that was hidden by the by the Amoyim, uh, uh, the the Nei that the Jews chased out. So really, you found a tremendous uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, treasure. So why don't I have to find out if I bought the house from somebody? It was Neochabati Yerichomai Achema. So that means maybe it changed hands 15 times. And then I'll find the true owner. No such thing, you're the true owner. Because they don't, they don't know this about us, the uh, uh, thing there. So therefore they're not kind yet. We'll say, uh, <clears throat> If that's the case, why by Shimon ben Shotach, when he sold the donkey with the jewel, and the uh, and the uh, and, and, and he returns the jewel, because the uh, the Arab obviously forgot it or something like that, so he says Baruch Alikay Shimon ben Shotach, that he paid kiddush Hashem. But why was the Baruch? I mean, obviously. He, he he didn't have to give it back. Why did he give it back? The reason he had to give it back is because because the the Canaan, uh, when he called the Canaan, the guy who owned the mule knew that he, that he had a jewel attached to it. He didn't feel he just forgot about it. So that means that's like an Aveda. He lost it. So he lost it. You got to return it to him. You don't have to return it because it's a guy. So definitely, but here's not even a guy. It's a toys. And they shout to you, Sakim is a machlekeson, so you got no involved. So obviously, there's an Indian to give it back. So therefore, I'm a Mela, I gave it back. And they, but here, I didn't even know about it in the first place. It's not Pishad as Indian. So, so therefore, it belongs to the guy who finds it over there. And the same thing over here. And I don't have to tell about it, even if I know about it before. Because that, that's something, if you want, why should I tell you something? You want to be kind of. If you're not kind, I'm going to buy the land, I'll be kind of, because it's not yours. It's not yours, it's not called cheating. Nothing there. Yeah. Then he says, uh, I want you to give me uh, Ephraim. And we say Ephraim was uh, not a nice man. 
he promises, he says to Avram, uh, I am Adoni So the matter says, and the, 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 the Ephraim is, is a rotten guy. Here he's willing to give him 400 for what he called. And in the end, he didn't even give him a discount. Like you call up any salesman, they're going to say to you, you want to buy it there? Right now, we're giving discounts. Would have bought it for discounts, right? Didn't even give him a discount. Now, I don't know how we, how we knew that everyone wanted to buy this land, because obviously he wanted to point out who Ephraim is, so obviously he knows what he wants to buy, right? How much could he add? Who knows? What's a cave worth? I don't know. So that's where it's trying to figure out how you can make a buck here. Now definitely, if you put down on the grave that the Nosmach Pela assigned, donated by Yefren Achiti, I'm sure he would have given it to him for nothing. To make sure he got it for nothing. Why? Because that way I got my name in Lost it, love it, for everything. Who knows what's hard? I'll get for it. I mean, whatever. It is. I don't even know about those things, but I'm assuming that he would have done that good thing. Avo wants to buy it. I don't want your shaykhs at all for you to have with it. I want it to be mine, not not yours that you gave me. I don't want your name touched with it at all. Okay. So now Avo's looking for a way to make a buck. The deal. Now, what did Yag, what did Avram want to buy? The Ma'ogha that was at the edge of his field. He did not want to buy the field. Right? It was definitely not in his vision. He wants to know what do you want for the cave. So what does he say to him? Mayan Ephraim is Avram Lemele. I'm going one. He said, the Sati Kets is a Kachmi man in the no, no, up. No, up. Yeah. Uh, what does he ask? He said, Poker Pigoli is Ephraim Mecher Chaycha. Me eaten Lee is more Samach Pela, I shall lay a share big taste of Deo. I want the Maori, which at the edge of his field. I don't want his field. I'm not interested in his field. I just want the thing. Because the money, if not, I'm going to pay for that. Actually, yes, we say ourselves. And he says to them, <coughs> Listen to me. I'm going to give you the field. And also the cave. So all of a sudden, we're dealing with the field that I've never wanted. Right? So we're not talking about the, the sod anymore. So Avram says, okay, that's the deal. Uh, let me pay you for that. So there he says, now we've got to talk about price. It's worth 400 thing there, which is obviously probably was not, but that was what he asked for. Right? It was one day a tremendous amount of money. But he upped the thing. For the Mara, he couldn't ask that price. But I gave you the field. And then now I told you how much the field is worth. And therefore, for that, you paid me. And that's how Afron got him. So that's the case. You have a bigger tight on that front. Not only you didn't you give me a discount, you, you cheated me altogether. I mean, uh, you sold me something I didn't want to sell, which is like a salesman. You call up a salesman, I just had the experience, and uh, he says, well, you take this too, you want a quarantine, you want this and that, and you obviously, you, you t- you're flustered at the, on the phone, and you keep answering yes, 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 and all of a sudden your bill is just three times what you wanted to pay originally, and you pay it, and, you know, or at least me. <laughs> And it says, Ayokim stay Ephraim Shem Machpelah Shlif Neimamre. The field stood up. What do you mean the field stood up? 
So the Shiva is learning Pshat that whenever he looked at the field now, it's all of a sudden Avram's field. So you start thinking of Avram at a point that, uh, that's the point of a memento. Memento doesn't mean like, what's the little tzatzkala you gave me? Who cares about it? There's no value to me. But the fact that you gave it to me makes me think about you every time I look at it. And that's worth money. That's, that's what you, you're really looking at. Yep. Now, we got a big question. What does Machpelah mean? The normal translation is the double cave, right? Meoras uh, ha The Meora, the cave, that's doubled, right? Okay. So the Psukim don't make sense then. The Yokum stay Ephraim, Asher ba Machpelah. The field of Ephraim, which was in the Machpelah. So Machpelah can't be doubled then. Must be some other meaning in it, and if you look at and uh, in all the times where it keeps mentioning the Malas Machpela, it doesn't use Malas Machpela except here. I think it's always the Sod is the Machpela. They all they just it, it, so I don't know really what Machpela means, but, but, but we refer to it as the uh, Malas Machpela. Uh, it happens to be a big thing, a big a big cave. Uh, assuming that we're on top, and exactly, I don't know when, when you walk into the building. I guess you know is it, it's built around the cave. The cave we're really walking into afterwards, where the shore was built up and stuff inside. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what well, what the, what the, what what's the building they rebuilt or what's the cave, but the whatever it is, there it's something that's in the, this double uh, that's high because the cover is all the way down. And we're on top, so therefore, uh, and they and they have a, 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 a not what a, not a sewer, a uh, a hole that makes you go down. That you're able to go down into the uh, into the actual cave, and uh, or whatever they whatever the the, the are. And there's a whole bunch of stories there if you listen to the guys tell you about it. And they snuck in one time and they irritated the Arabs tremendously because they found out about it. And uh, I don't know, it was a lot of land, it came out to many, many international incidents due to the cave. But exactly what's the deal, I don't know. The Targum says Kafelta. Kafelta. Yeah, even by Steha Machpelo. It says Kafelta. That's the thing. The, 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 the field, field is double. double. That's, double. that's what it says. What about the Mora Samach Pelam before? Or it doesn't say. Well, yes, Mora Samach Pelam, yeah. And Shabbat, you don't test. What does he say? Mora's Kafelta. Mora Kafelta. So the field, the Mora is Kafelta, the field is Kafelta. I don't know what that means. What do you mean the field is kafelta? Your double property, that's not bad, you know. You know, two pieces of land for one. Okay. Okay. Avram, uh, okay, he, he's old, he just, uh, he saw that he could uh, what do you call it? Uh, he, you know, so he just came back from the from the uh, Akeda, and he saw he could have killed the son, and he wouldn't have had any son from the son. So uh, he better get him married. Okay, so he's going to look for him for Shidduch. Okay, so he calls in Eliezer, and uh, and he makes him swear. He says, make him a shliach. He said, I want you to go and go find a wife for him. Think, because I don't want you to marry the Canaanim to him. He said, what does he say? Where should he go? Of Artsy to my land, of Meladity, where I was born, Taylor. Okay. Uh, so you have feelings, what we call for the Altaheim, uh, the immigrants that came to America. 
And he's saying they always call it the outer heim. Always then the where's my home? The outer heim is really the home. And this is just we're stuck here because Hitler came along. But otherwise we we really the outer heim. I remember the outer heim. The outer heim. Okay. So Eliezer is some back. Why do love her? Evet, Ulai lay seva heisha. Why don't she doesn't want to go? Well, it's as close to this land. Hoshiv, Hoshiv, it's been chalot. So she says to me, "So, should I return your son to the land you came out of?" Now, why don't you just say lots of chod to your land? Why the land you came out of? For you, it's the land you that you still consider it your land. But for your son, he's 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 born again in Alex Canaan. He doesn't have any allegiance at all to the old land. He's only the land that you came from. No one else came to him. And we took generation of, of Machanchen or whatever it is to learn that in America too. You're not the old land, you're talking about Americans now. It's a different a different type of chinuch, a different type of what he called. That was necessary. You can't just Try and do what you did over there. And uh, it was a different world. And that same thing of him, he's telling him, he's only to him, it has no meaning whatsoever. He couldn't care less what the way about this land. And uh, my feelings of Russia is the same way. Okay, so now what does the Evid do? You notice he's being called the Evid all this time. You don't even know it's Eliezer until uh, until Oish. I think even does it say over there Eliezer? You know? He can just change this to Ish. Just to Ish. It's the only thing you mentioned, Eliezer. Yeah. And we'll talk about why he's called a chel, a the Evid and Eliezer, and uh, Ahish, Eliezer, and Evid. Why those two terminologies, without uh, speaking about him. Okay. Um, he takes uh, with him uh, a nice show of stuff. He takes with him uh, ten, uh, ten camels. I don't know... And he takes a star showing what he actually owns, right? But Avram, his properties, all the properties, all the Mavodim, everything else. You know, it's just showing his net worth. And he's going to Ramnagayim to Yenocha to go find the wife, because that's uh, where Avram told him to go to. And he makes a tefillet to the Rabbeinah If I'm going to stay by the water, by the uh, by the, the well, and the girls are all coming out to uh, to uh, draw water, so I'm going to say to the girl, say to the girl, Atino Mikadech, Ben, give give me from your pitcher, and I should drink, and she's going to answer me, the umber should say, Vigam Gamalecha Ashke. Drink, and I'm also going to make your camels drink. Right? That's the girl that's going to be for Yitzhak. Then, of course, you did. Okay. He's standing there, and Rivka comes out, and she does what? Then, in Kanda Shechmon, in my narrative, okay, good. Will you give me a drink of water from your picture? But Tamish should say, Adoni, okay, doesn't say anything further about the camels. But after she gave him to drink, I will give them to drink also. Okay, now the funny thing is, the lotion that was used, he asked that she should say, um, and he, she says to him, Gam Gimalech Eshev. 
when he repeats the story on the next page, it says he made, he's telling over the story what he asked for. Uh, that she said to me, Eshov. And what happened for Rivka? She comes out, and uh, and also the gam gamalecha ashke. She'll give it to drink, which is the opposite of what he asked for. Complete opposite. He asked for ashke, and she said Eshov. And he repeats all the story that he has for Eshev, and she said Ashke. What's the basic difference between the two, Ashke and Eshev? Ashke means to give to drink, Ashke to give to drink, and Eshev is to draw the water. So obviously in translation it's a difference, but basically we're talking about giving the, the, the camels to drink, so what's the difference in Lashanis? It depends what her, commi- her commitment is to help him. There are two ways for camels to drink. And this is important also for the fact that the Medr says that uh, people asked sometimes like Kahagin, and the Benson answered him Kahagin. And here they, they, she asked, he asked for a request that was not a proper request, and the Benson answered him with a proper answer, as opposed to, let's say, Yiftach, who asked improperly. Because he didn't know who was going to come out of his house, and the Ben Shon answered him improperly. That, that his daughter get him out of the house, and therefore he had a big tro- uh, caused a lot of trouble. So basically, you have to know what you're asking for and, and be more specific. What was wrong with his request? His request seems to be a, a, a very good one. I'm asking, for, I'm going to ask for a girl to give me a drink, and she says, and she volunteers to give my. <coughs> My camels to drink. I mean, that's tremendous chesed. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And some, something to think about, some about the concept of chesed. Um, a gam has, a guy has to do a lot of work. Let's say you see a guy turning his tire. Right? Is there a mitzvah for me to go over and say to him, you know, hey, let me do that. He's doing it. He's doing a good job. Who's asking you for, for your opinion here? So, I don't need you. Stay away. Right? What makes that chesed? That's basically him. I mean, he has camels. He probably got away to give him to drink. So give him the drink. What do you want from me? Okay. Why is she volunteering for it? Okay. So I would think that cash is not real cash yet, because obviously if he hasn't got a, any pitch of himself to take a drink out of, how is he going to get water for the camels? That means he doesn't have the pitcher in the first place. Okay. Um, okay. So a camel drinks two ways, just like a human being drinks two ways. You have you drink where you're thirsty. What does that thirsty mean? Your throat needs some water. Uh, your mouth is dry, whatever it is there. You take a, a glass of water and you're fine, right? And then the doctor tells you, I want you to drink 10 glasses of water a day. That's to keep you hydrated. That has nothing to do with being thirsty. In fact, you, you're probably plotting drinking that water. Like, I can't, I can't drink anymore. You look shit. So obviously you're not thirsty anymore, but the point is you have to drink the water because you have to be hydrated. That's a very important factor. Camels that come out of the uh, out of the desert uh, actually look uh, the the hump on their back actually shifts and fall to the side. What is it? The hump is pure fat, and the fat holds on the water. That hydrates it. Now it happens to be a camel holds enough water in its body where it can live for two weeks or three weeks in, in the desert. And therefore, uh, they can go through the desert where other animals can't. 
but it's again simply that they are hydrated for a longer period of time than, than everybody else. Not that they, so they have a special water tank in there, in there. So therefore, when you give them to drink, there are two ways to give a drink. The dog or the camel is thirsty. For that, a glass of water is enough. The camel to be hydrated again, in other words, by uh, giving them the drink after one cup after the other cup after the other cup, it's going to be like a human. You're not going to want it. So what do you do? You give the salt to the camel. And the camel gets thirsty because of the salt. And therefore, you keep giving it more and more water until you watch the camel actually blows up like a balloon. You can actually watch it uh, expand by giving it the water. So those are the two things. So he asked that I'm going to give water to my camel. That means drink of water. Drink of water. That's it. One glass of water. And that's why it was in the, not even considered a proper request. Because for that, you have many people that would have Rahmanis for a glass of water. In fact, you have more people that would give water for a camel than the, or, or for, for an animal that's thirsty than for a human that's thirsty. And I think there's an expression, as I remembered as a kid, that he's so mean that he wouldn't even give a thirsty dog a, a drink of water. That must mean that to a dog, to not to give is meaner than not giving to a man, to a person. Why? Because you have, should have Rahmanus on an animal. So the person, you don't have Rahmanus, you have Rahmanus on an animal. So that's really what was the improper request, because for that you may have Maybe even a mamzeris, maybe a zoyna, maybe who knows what, what kind of woman would have that kind of rachmanis also, even though, uh, you know, you're asking for a big thing. So that's why it was an improper request. <coughs> but what did she volunteer for? She volunteers for, I'm going to be willing to draw water. I see you haven't got a pitcher. So if you haven't got a pitcher, there's no way you're going to get water to, to give water to camels. I'm willing to give the waters, to draw water for the camels as long as they keep drinking. That means if you feed them the salt and make them thirsty, so they'll be thirsty, need more water, I'll keep giving them more water. If you don't give them salt, you don't do anything about it, you sit down on the ground and say, uh, okay, kid, it's yours, you do what you want, I'm not going to do it. Okay. So it's a big job. That's what Eshel means. I'm going to draw water. I'm not giving them to drink. You're causing the drink. In the end, what did she do? She's the one that gave the salt, and she's the one that gave it to him because she saw they're not doing anything. I don't see why. So therefore, you see the chesed. From her. In other words, they can't work without her because without the picture, they can't work. And the thing is, so... Well, Shiva Lehm shot that she wanted to tell him that, you know, why did she not answer the way he asked? She waited till he finished drinking and then she first volunteered him. Because you first do your chesed, then you want to do another chesed, tell him about our chesed. I don't have to brag about my chesed. Oh, by the way, I'll give you the drink, I'll give you camels to drink and everything. That's a chesed. That means you want to brag. It's not so much of a thing. Okay. I want to say a little bit different. I want to say, if you offer that the way that I'm saying, that you're afraid of Eliezer's imposing size, you're being bullied. Eliezer, I assume, was a big man. He was the, the head of all the Avodim, everything by Avon Avinu. He had to be imposing. He had to be something special about him, right? That he was... And if he's telling, and he's a guy who used to giving commands, whatever it is, when he says to the girl, give me a glass of water, I mean, and, and the way he put it, like, uh, you know, give me a glass of water, I want to pour me pour the glass of water into my mouth, I mean, it's a little bit uh, ridiculous, right? You just say, please lend me the, the pitcher for a few minutes, I'll fill it up as soon as I finish drinking. And whatever it is there, instead of saying, you pour the water into my mouth. Right? Okay. And don't forget, she's only three years old. Now, 
Uh, you can say, oh, they made him big in those days. It's true. But you can still tell if she was three years old. You can tell a guy that's a tall guy. You can tell if he's 20 or 30 or 40. You can tell. So I can tell if he's three or 30. I'm for sure she can tell. So if we know she's a little kid, and he's a big guy, and he's an old man, but he looks like a 20-year-old, so it doesn't make a difference. He's a big guy, and he, he, uh, he surely intimidates her in a thing. So baby, the reason she's volunteering to give you the camels is not because she's such a balas chesed. She's doing it because she's afraid that you're gonna harm her. In other words, you're asking her for water, and now she's frightened that you're a bully. You're asking her to give her a drink. Then they ask her to give me a drink of water, want me to put you, like I said. She says, pour the water into my mouth. What kind of crazy request is that? All of us, you want me to do the things, make myself look like a jerk, to pour water into your mouth. How am I gonna do that, get on a rock? And stay on top of you, or you're gonna lie down on the floor, and I'm gonna pour it into your mouth. How am I gonna do this? And uh, whatever, I'm gonna do it. Uh, so therefore, I see your your guy that's a little bit of bullyish. You know, in other words, you're trying to impose your das on me, and therefore maybe I'm trying to make you to quiet you down that you shouldn't harm me by telling you I'm gonna give you water of the water for your for your camels too. And therefore, that way, oh, I got a servant that's gonna do work for me. Why am I gonna harm her for? So, um, I wouldn't harm her. That would be a simple way of learning shot. If that's the case, then what Rifki is telling him, I'm not afraid of you. You want a drink? Here's the drink. I don't have to volunteer for anything, even though you asked it uh, not a good request, with a stupid way the way you put it. But I'm willing to do it for you because obviously you need a drink of water. So I'm gonna give you a drink of water. But I'm not volunteering for your camels now because I'm not up to that. Now that I finished giving you the drink, now I need to see what other needs you have. And I see you don't have money, you don't have a pitcher to fill up the water for your camels. Okay, I'll do the camels too. So I volunteer for that. It's to show you I'm not afraid. I always tie it, this is a way that uh, we can counteract bullyism. Now, what's the point of a bully? I'm not talking about physical threats. I'm talking about just bullies, you know, with words. What, the, what, 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 what is the way that the person he intimidates someone by, uh, by the way he speaks, what the way he is, how, he, how big he is, and so on? So the person being intimidated is going to try and bend over backwards to please the guy so he shouldn't hurt him. I'm not afraid but I'm also gonna give you chesed. You know, what the, what's a normal response when somebody will ask you, you know, uh, you wanna do me a favor, you wanna to go to the store for me? The store's five blocks away. You wanna to go to the store for me and pick me up some potato chips? You can't say potatoes, you always say the other thing. Okay, pretzels. Okay, he's living in Lakewood, so it's potato chips. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some potato chips for me. Uh, what are you, a cripple? You can't do this yourself? What did my mother tell me when I went to yeshiva? Don't let anybody take advantage of you, right? That's what I was told as a kid, and I was told. And so I thought, what should my response be? Yeah, they say, what are you, a cripple? If you do that, then the guy's gonna punch you in the nose, or he's going to say, you better do it, or whatever, because obviously, you start it up and then you take a look at the guy, he's, he's twice your size, and you're gonna do it, and what he called, and you're gonna let someone take advantage of him because you have no choice. Well, what happened if you would say to the guy, okay, I know you're a bully, and you're doing this just to make me go to the store for you, but I also know that if I don't go to the store for you, you're not gonna eat it. You're not gonna go yourself, that's for sure. So therefore, you're gonna to have to try and find somebody else, and you may or may not find someone else. I'll tell you what, Mr. Bully, I am willing to go get you a box of pretzels because I know you won't have the pretzels unless I go get them for you. So I'm willing to go. 
Okay. Now, how would the bully feel about that? That's what the guy's telling me. I have pity on you. I know you can't do it without me. And I'm going to do it. I'm the big guy. I don't need you. Right? So all of a sudden, you won't be a bully. That's how God was feeling. And that's what she told him. Okay. So that's that story. And when he repeats it later, the reason he repeats it the way he did is to say that he asked only to draw the water. Right? Because too much to ask someone to actually give the drink. And Rivke, uh, because he, he can't tell, can't tell Psuel, and love and you know, you got a sister, it's a do goody and everything else. I mean, they're the other things, at least we get a buck out of it, do something, get something for it, right? Credit at least. So we say, it's always gonna be in the good, to the, at the right, wrong place at the right time, it's going to them. No, the shot is that, that, what he called, I happen to be there, so I bragged. And I said, oh, I'm gonna do that, and I'll do this also for you. Whatever it is, so therefore they understood that they didn't. They didn't. They didn't say, "Oh, because they really were nice people." So therefore, they really didn't uh, have criticism. And uh, okay, just one more thing about Rashi and the thing about the goodness of them. Avram Avinu sent Eliezer to that place for what reason? because his brother lived there, this, his brother, his family is there, and they're good people. They're like him, in, uh, uh, genetically. Uh, and obviously they didn't develop it, they didn't become Jews, they didn't become some of the Tzavis HaKadosh Baruch Oh, well, they're nice people. Okay, so now, now are we your pussy? What what happened? That was the money he gave her and all that. ran out to the man By he he saw the the jewelry that he gave her. Mister Then he says to him, So Rashi says, Why did he run? Why did he go? Because he saw the jewelry. So it was really not the purpose of being a nice guy. He did it because he wanted a guy to feel that if he gave a tip to, to, Leah, to, to Lifke, he's gonna give me a tip too for joining around. So that's why I ran out. First of all, and what did he do? He says, come into the house. I even cleaned out the house. How did he know he's a Jew? No one told him anything. What makes you think he's a Jew? So now we live with the pursuit and what it says. But with before, why she says, well, what he give me, he says, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's a symbol to the two bluchas, to the ten ourselves, I mean, she knows this, she weighed all the things there, or he's telling her this. This is, you should know, to represent this. Why is he telling it is? Because that was a symbol of Avram's people. Avram's people believe in the Torah. The Torah has luchas, the Torah has the sadibris. This is what we believe in. This is our symbol to know who we are. So whenever you see a guy with Shnei and uh, Nezem and whatever it is that you know, it's one of us. Okay, it's like the uh, Christians used to use the fish. They go, the, the, the fish, that was an identification of a Christian. So this is the vacation of a yid. Okay, so first I, I told, so first he tells Lovon, uh, first he tells him, he tells him the whole Maise, right? So if go, so he runs out, Achutza uh, Aloyin, he runs out to help him. He's a nice guy, that's the thing about him. But, by he kills Hanezim, he says, Tzmid ma yidea achesei. And he heard Diveritza with the whole story they told. Then all of a sudden, she know, he knows she's a Jew. Okay, now I better get the Avedis out of the house. So then he sells him, then he got out of the Avedis out of the house. But there are two different points here that the, that the Torah was putting in. And I think it, it's very meduic, the, the way the Torah put it. 
Anyway, have a good Shabbos, everybody. Good job. Good job, everyone. Bye.